getting chill bumps. Nick, you get chill bumps just then? Listen, if nothing else works out here on earth, you've got a home in glory land as one of God's children being saved by the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. Lord, it never worked out my way. I couldn't make the team. I got fired 14 times. My children um, back talked me. Oh, oh boy, let's not go there. All right? Uh, and Jesus will say, Child, you're home now. And that's all we need to be grateful for if we have nothing else to be grateful for. But He has an end run in store for you. Well, the last thing I'd like to say is this, and I'm going to review. Worship is spontaneous. Worship is specific. Worship has a statement of purpose, a goal, an end run to it. And the last thing I want to say is this. When we look at chapter 15, and you look down at verses 20 and 21, Moses' sister got in on the act. You ready for this? Worship spawns more worship. Let me go back to my trip across Michigan uh, on my bicycle. Looking over, I still see that field of sunflowers. I never saw a whole 30, 40 acre of sunflowers before. Beautiful in the sun. And I just started praising the Lord. And the cattle over here not only looked at me, a couple of them spoke. Do you think they were worshiping the Lord too? When we worship the one true God in spirit and in truth, it spawns worship from other people. And that's why when I'm speaking sometimes, you'll let out with an amen, right? Okay, that's your worship. That's a little act of worship. Now, if you want to stand up and jump up and down and dance like Miriam did, God bless you. I'll sit down and let you do it for a while. All right? And you know what? It doesn't have to be anything specific. I got two left feet. You should have seen Lauren and I dance when, when I married them and the father-daughter dance. It was a hot mess. All right? It's just because I, I don't know what I'm doing. Right? Gentlemen, do you know how to dance? Say no. No, no. But you know what? I'm thinking that just like David, I think it's in uh, 1 Samuel, I wrote it down somewhere, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6. When the Ark of the Covenant came into Jerusalem for the first time, for the first time, David danced before the Lord. Do you think that was rehearsed? Do you think he had practiced or taken any kind of a dance lesson? Listen, folks, I think, I think David started jumping up and down for joy. All right? When you get happy in the Lord, if you want to jump up and down, God bless you, man. Okay? Uh, uh, we probably all need the exercise anyway. Amen? Just start doing jumping jacks, Corbin. All right? Uh, pretend like you're at practice. All right? All right. Well, listen. Moses' worship spawned more worship. And I believe that that probably is a good way to think if whether or not we're worshiping the Lord the right way. I'll close with this. I believe that there is a miracle found in chapter 15. I think there is. Now, yes, it talks about what happened in chapter 14. All ready? Here it comes. This is original. This is the first original thought I've had all week. I think it's a miracle that high and holy God invites little yous and me's to worship his name and he accepts that worship. I'm going to say it again. And I want you to kind of just thank God for this when I say it. At the invitation of almighty God... I am who I am. I created everything that there is. And you ain't seen nothing yet until you get to heaven. I invite my children to pat me on the back of the hand. To look at my face and say, Daddy, I love you. 
and he accepts that worship. Boys and girls, that's a miracle, isn't it? And that's a miracle that you can experience any time you want to. I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes and just in your heart, worship the Lord. Just thank Him and praise Him. There's many things that the Lord has brought us through. Difficult times. Just like Israel there at the Red Sea. Maybe you're facing some things right now. But at the heart of what Moses did in this act of worship was in essence he counted his blessings, didn't he? And that always helps us to thank our Lord, to bless His name. And so, Lord, as we finish our service, we ask that You would be blessed by us counting our blessings. In Jesus' name. You can find this hymn on page 786, Count Your Blessings. Uh, We'll do a couple of verses of it, okay? You can stay in your seats if you want to. When upon life's blessed... I'm sorry, let me start all over. When upon life's pillows you are tempest-tossed, are discouraged thinking all is lost count your many blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what god has done Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God hath done. Let's do the last one. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels will attend. So, Lord, you've been good to us. You've been blessing us all these years, all these times. And we pray, Lord, that as much as we've heard a message about worship, that sometime or another, if we haven't been able to just let loose and praise your name today, but maybe sometime this afternoon, maybe before we go to bed, maybe while it's dark and we look up at the moon and the sun and we think of your great creation and how magnificent you are above and beyond all others. Help us, Lord, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Now dismiss us with your love, and especially, Lord, bless Deacon as they're working with him today. Give him your rich blessings as the doctors and nurses are trying to help him. We pray, Lord, that you would guide our paths, um, with your word as a lamp unto our feet. Help us, Lord, to find ourselves in the appointments that you've set up for us this week. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you all. Good seeing everybody.